The first Teddy Bear Parade was in 1983, and that was to celebrate the fact that the city of Gresham was changing the traffic uh, patterns in downtown Gresham from one-way streets to two-way streets. My husband, Dale, and I, we started Toy Bear uh, in downtown Gresham in 1982. You know what, it was just simply luck that we named it Toy Bear, because we were a toy store. And at that time, there were uh, several other new entrepreneurs in downtown Gresham. And we really were always trying to think of promotions. And it just so happened in uh, 1983, the uh, teddy bear itself was 80 years old and extremely popular at the time. Everybody had one, everybody loved them because there is something very warm about them. And I don't think anybody that ever held a teddy bear could ever not say that wasn't the case. And so uh, there were a few of us uh, business people and we thought, hey, you know what? We need to have some kind of a promotion, a celebration, and to draw people into downtown. So let's use this and we'll call it Bear With Us because that made sense. Remember, everybody was really excited about the bears. There were little things like the drugstore. They, you got a bear float, you know, for a dollar or something. That's what inspired the, the Children's Week. And it kept it going because we'd always have this whole week of little events so that people would be coming into your stores. And so uh, we had a, a lovely little flyer that the kids could, there's an activity book and the children could do it. And then we thought to end the week, we would have a teddy bear parade. That would be really fun. And of course, none of us had ever put a parade on, right? We knew we had to go to the city and we had to get permits, but basically it was a pretty, um, it was simply put together, let's just do it that way. We started at St. Henry's there on First Street. So I get there about an hour before with my clipboard and people are already all there. I couldn't believe it. So, I mean, there was so much enthusiasm for a parade. So I um, checked them all off. And then now, meanwhile, there was a lovely couple. It was George and Carol uh, Klinger, and they actually had antique cars. So he was able to help us get the uh, antique cars that we needed for the VIPs that be riding in the parade. But Smokey the Bear had to get on the fire track and I always appreciated the fact that my husband always helped Smokey the Bear get into the fire truck. That's where he rides. So anyway, so at the very end of this, and they're taking everybody out of the parking lot, we started at St. Henry's there on First Street and ended over at the neighborhood center. Well, now all of a sudden George is gone, Carol is gone, my husband is gone, and now I'm the last person and I'm supposed to take I'll help get these people out of the parking lot. Well, I was able to do it, but I want to say it was definitely a first experience. So off they went, and the first year went really well. So the next year I was smarter and I brought a card table, because that just shows you how we just kind of advanced so slowly, but we were learning as we went. And I would say probably the first year, um, there were maybe at the most under 200 uh, people in the parade. But everybody seemed to really enjoy it. The, the requirement was that you had to have a bear. But you couldn't be like a politician that was running for office. We, we just didn't want that. We wanted it to be just a down-home family parade. All the entries in the parade were uh, 
very well done. They were um, definitely not uh, <laughs> Rose Festival ones, but and whenever we had a Grand Marshal, I always would say, I want you to realize that this is a down-home parade. This is this is what you're coming to. But they all remarked about the enthusiasm of the uh, of the community, and they were all very warmed by the the welcoming, and uh, so that that made me feel good. Is that there's something good about just not being fancy, but just being down home. In 1986, Margaret uh, Weil was the um, mayor, and so she suggested having a youth mayor. She worked with the school district, and that would be Dr. Anne Marie Collins, and they uh, put together a youth essay contest. And then the winner, of course, was the mayor, and then the Runners up, they were the city councilors. So if you were the mayor, you got to be with the mayor for a day, and then you and the runners up were recognized at the city council meeting, and then you also got to ride in the parade with the councilors and with the mayor. The community on a whole loved the parade. And, they, and even the people that came brought their bears, you know, and they would sit with their bears and watch the parade go by. Uh, and, and actually, the, lots of the parade would be like mothers with their strollers, and the strollers would be decorated. Uh, and, and some of the stores did um, floats. Uh, so not only we had the support of the businesses, but we also had of the organizations, and, and we had the uh, support of, of the families. They just loved it, and the schools, they, they loved it too. People that really helped me a lot were, of course, the staff at Toy Bear. They were amazing. You think about all that they had to do, the phone calls they made for me, the follow-ups they did for me, the um, taking care of the customers after, before the parade and after the parade, uh, taking care of the costumes, building the floats. Uh, they were wonderful, and I really, really appreciate them. They were a big help during the Teddy Bear Parade, and uh, couldn't have done it without them. So that's kind of the way it went for um, uh, a couple of years. And then, of course, it grew. And now when it grew, that meant that I didn't have enough volunteers within the, the business community. So it started growing. And I had city staff members, uh, organizations, and particularly the Seroptimus, some of them uh, that were members of the Seroptimus, came and helped me. Seroptimus is an organization that... Uh, has business women in it that own or manage businesses. At the time, that was what our, our criteria was. So uh, during that time, and I was brand new to it, there, there was a teddy bear parade that was going on in Gresham. And it was put on by Pat Fiedler, who owned the toy bear. And she had asked if some people from Seropimus would come down and help her. So uh, being new and naive, my hand went up with several others in the in the organization. And I remember the day that we did it, and we were all decked out in our blue raincoats and it was pouring buckets. And I remember walking with Betty Shadeen, who's one of the legendary women of Gresham at that time. And we walked behind horses that had the band right in front of them. Not a good idea. <laughs> That was my first recollection of the teddy bear parade. The volunteers always came to me. I just thought that was wonderful. But the reason they did is because I think that Gresham was really ready to once again have something like this for the families, for the children. And of course, the parade was a big draw. We didn't have the computer like at the beginning, like they do now. And it wasn't until I got some city staff that were helping and they were actually able to put it on a word processor, which I was wonderful. And then then uh, we were able to use somebody's computer, which, you know, was that was like an amazing thing. And that was happening at the very, very end of this 10 years. So that really changed it as far as trying to organize it. We had moved from St. Henry's parking lot to the East Hill parking lot. And even during that time, we learned that we were supposed to not start at one place and end at another place, but to actually begin and end at the same. Bessie made it 
much easier for the people who had horses, the equestrians. So we um, learned uh, we learned a little bit as we went, but it really was the I guess the enthusiasm of the of the neighborhood. They loved the teddy bear parade, and the newspapers were wonderful about. Um, following us and uh, we of course we put an ad in they gave us so much uh, free publicity so I guess everybody was really on our side I I don't everybody just wanted it to happen uh, they really liked it we always had posters that was but somebody took the posters to downtown Portland and when that happened it <laughs> somebody from the, our insurance company that was insuring the downtown Gresham boosters they saw this and thought, what? What is going on in Gresham? So I get a call two weeks before the, the parade is supposed to be scheduled. And and it's from Bob Bergeron. He was kind of, a, he, he really was a great guy um, in the community. And so he said, Pat, I got to see you. I said, okay. He said, we're going to have to cancel the parade. <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> and so he said, well, and explained what had happened, and they said that they couldn't possibly cover the parade with our insurance premium that we're paying. And I said, oh my goodness. So I asked, can I talk to the agent? So I went over and I talked to the agent, and together we discussed um, the implications of this, and that it was so close to the parade actually happening that it would just be, it'd be just devastating for the community. So bless his heart, then he spoke to his superiors, and guess what? I had already said to him, I said, you know what, if you guys would just do it this year, then I promise you that I will find somebody else to sponsor it next year. And that's what happened, is the Seroptimus Inn, I asked them, they had a million dollar uh, umbrella, and they were willing to do that, and all they required is that there be a member on the committee, and of course we already had multiple members. So the Seroptimus saved the teddy bear parade. It was just getting too big. It's the, it's the way that I felt, she felt. And so then she came to Seroptimus because the Seroptimus women had been helping her throughout the years to help do this with Pat being the, the manager of it all. And so uh, Pat came to Seroptimus and asked if we would want to continue to take on the teddy bear parade for her which we gladly picked up and did. One thing they do is they're a wonderful group of women and they collect uh, money, raise money for scholarships. And so they decided, which made a lot of sense, to turn it into a fundraiser. And that's what they did. And because of that, they give many, many, many scholarships each year that might have not have been available to them under other fundraising um, plans that they might have had. So it turned out really well. And that's where they decided to let anyone who wanted to be in the parade, you know, then they could, they could be in the parade. So somewhere along that line, then Metro East came in and said, hey, we'll film this. And um, we've done it every year since. We would do the parade for the first couple of years and I, I can't exactly remember uh, who decided that we should be having co-hosts for the parade, that we also needed to have somebody that had a deeper voice than I did. And so Greg Matthews, with either the police department or the fire department at Gresham, and uh, not knowing Greg really well, but knowing that he was and still is the commentator for almost everything that goes on in Gresham. Carol was intimidating for me at first. She is always so put together and she is always so formal and she's always so pristine. She's just got this, this heart for this community and, and the knowledge of the Seroptimist. But at the end of the day, we're very close and, uh, and I love working with Carol and, and all she brings to it. Uh, but there's an organization level to Carol that doesn't exist with me. So we play off of that. I'm a little more fly by the seat of the pants. She's a little more, here's your binder, Greg, let's say this. And if we alternate pages, we'll get it done. Uh, but at the end of the day, I, I would like to think she would say the same about me. We, we absolutely love working together. And as I tell Carol all the time, we're really big in the South. I always dress in something warm and I always wear a vest. I don't want to wear a coat because a coat's too bulky to wear. So I always get a different vest. So it got to the point where <laughs> Greg's wife is dressing him. 
because she never knows what color I'm going to wear and doesn't want him to wear a coat that and maybe I've got a pink vest on for him to wear a red coat. So now he's <laughs> he comes with about three or four coats in his car so that he can decide which coat <laughs> matches my vest. I think a lot of folks see the finished product, but they don't realize how much is going on behind the scenes prior to the event and then on the morning of the event. Metro East Community Media uh, sets up and deploys an incredibly talented staff of folks out there. And what we end up with is this professional product that goes out there and plays throughout the year various times. And uh, folks get to see a live production of the show. And I look at the equipment that's changed over the years. I look at how everything's transformed to this product. And at the end of this whole, uh, this whole big parade, we say thank you because you bring this parade to us throughout the year and once just isn't enough for me. I think what the Teddy Bear Parade does, uh, unlike any other is, we're encouraging everybody to participate. We continue to grow in numbers. We don't ever cut it off. We just say, come on out and be a part of it. And, uh, and what the Sorotmas do with that level of participation is amazing when it comes to scholarship funds and things. So uh, they're not charging much for, you know, for an entry fee. And if you can't afford it, there's ways around that that they'll work with you. But at the end of the day, you can join as an individual, you can join as a group, you can join as an organization, religious organization, businesses, uh, this entire community. And it's just a lot of fun to get people out and doing that. When we do the parade, all the participants have to come to East Hill Church. And we take up the whole parking lot and part of the grass area that's over behind their offices and everything because we have so many participants. We get there at 7.30 in the morning, and some kids are there at 7.30 in the morning. The parade does not start until 10 o'clock, so they have a long wait. East Hill Church has been really good at giving out cookies and, and things to the children, and so we try to facilitate them as best we can. And every year, we always take a bunch of teddy bears, so if a kid comes without a teddy bear, he can have a teddy bear to carry in the parade, because that's what our parade's all about, is the teddy bear parade. Uh, somehow they have them serpentine throughout the church parking lot and then all of a sudden everybody's in a row and somehow it matches up with the book that we've got in order of color groups. Well, we're really fortunate to have a great police department and a great fire department in Gresham and not just great from their service aspect, but from their approachable standpoint and participation level. Uh, so, right, we start every parade with the motorcycle cops uh, or sometimes the, the police chief on a bicycle. Uh, and then we end it all with the fire department, uh, you know, uh, and, and that's always awesome too. So you have truck 71, engine 71, and the chief coming through, but we're blessed to have the public safety that we have uh, and that they want to be part of this community the way that uh, in some cases, uh, other communities don't have that. Uh, we certainly do in Gresham. Shane is an, a little different story. When he became mayor, he actually was so uh, wonderful as far as always helping us to make sure that things could go smoothly. Mayor Bemis has and his family have been in our parade for as long as he has been mayor. In fact, he was in there before, I believe, when he was on the city council. What's neat about Shane too is he uh, welcomes his good friend Todd, you know, Mr. Gresham, into the car as well, which is a big event for, for Todd. And Todd is an icon also around Gresham that the mayor befriended in high school and has, he's just part of the family. The mayor has, has helped, you know, promote this. Uh, obviously we set up outside Bocelli's, which is his restaurant. He's welcomed us with open arms. He's accommodated us at every level. I mean, it's kind of neat to watch the progression of that family as well as it has been our parade. His little kid was pretty tiny when he became mayor, so Derek kind of grew up with the parade. <laughs> Our parade is about an hour and a half, and it's about a mile and a half. And that's a long ways for little tiny children to walk. And by the time they get to probably half a mile, mom's carrying them, or pulling them in a wagon, or pushing them on a bike. We have a lot of floats, and we have a lot of trucks that people will decorate, and they'll put a whole class in the back of the truck, or a whole uh, daycare, or, any kind of organization like that. We do have marching bands from Gresham High and Barlow High, and we have a lot of acrobatic groups. We have health clubs that participate. We have everybody that participates. And I'm sure if we did not have a positive event going on, 
we would not have the participation that we get. I always appreciate people that just put forth the effort. I mean, we see a lot of, uh, on occasion, there'll be a car with a placard on the door and that's that's all we get. Um, but there are folks that just put a ton of effort into this and they, they do the flatbed trucks. And I guess I'm, I'm, I'm a little more partial to the ones where you've got the hay bales, little kids sitting on it and parents and adults making sure they're safe. And those are great, but but I'm always a big fan too of the marching bands. I I think when we get the high school marching band out there uh, and, and, and down they go down Main Street, I think there's just nothing better than that. The grade schools really try to put together um, either having the children come in March or do something to participate in the parade. Everybody kind of wanted to have some presence there. Their bicycles are decorated as bears. We've always had clowns. Our community changes. So as our community changes with organizations and people and stuff, the parade dynamics change too. So we never quite know what we're going to get until we see it coming down. We go, oh, okay, let's find this one. And then we go on with it. So it's, it's fun. There's no limitations on who's going to participate in the parade. And folks get to come out and they see their neighbor, they see their friends, they see their basketball team, their high school, their former grade school. Uh, and now you've got people that are bringing their kids to the parade that they used to attend when they were kids. And so I think what the community gets out of it is a special feeling and kind of that warmth in your heart, even though we have some rainy days, uh, they, they kind of get that feeling of community. And I think Gresham does a really good job of capturing that. And I think that we have several you know events, but uh, none other like this teddy bear parade. For the children that participate in the parade, every little girl has ever always wanted to be in a parade and does her her little thing that you're supposed to do like the Rose River Festival princesses do. So they get to do that. Little boys, they are always anxious. They're running on a whole lot of energy. And so for them to be in a parade, to go down and wave at mom or dad or grandma or grandpa that's over, that's really neat for them. And of course, then grandpa and grandma all swell up and get all excited because they've seen their kids. But it, it gives an opportunity for kids to learn to be in a parade. It also gives them the opportunity to learn how to work with others because you can only go so fast, you have to stay in line, you have to do this and you have to do that. So it gives them that regiment that they have. And it also says, hey, I was in a parade. And honestly, you know, when you think about a kid's perspective, if they go to Disneyland, they see the parade in Disneyland, they see and they wave from the sideline. This is their Disneyland. It's their chance to be a princess. It's their chance to be a character and for the community to support them and welcome them. And so I think it kind of makes them feel, you know, they're embraced at that point. Everybody wants to be in a parade at some point in their life. And this is an opportunity for that to happen. Everything good about Gresham appears on that morning and watches and walks down Main Street. And, uh, and I'm always excited about it because uh, there's nothing like this wonderful parade. But everybody I had was so, um, was so helpful and gave so much time and energy towards it. Our mission was to have a fun event for the families in Gresham. That was really our, our mission statement and that was our goal. And that's what we did. You know, when you start something and I don't really think you think about how long it's gonna be. You're so wrapped up in the organization thing. But now that I, you know, I look back and I see it, I, I just think it's so, it's so wonderful that so many people are participating and so many people can say, hey, I was in that parade. Oh, I remember that parade, you know, and there's just something about that. And I think it, it adds to a community to have something that is really special because I do think that Seroptimus had made it a very special parade. Because they don't do it themselves. Um, I would want to brag on the Seroptimus International in Gresham just a bit. And I would want to make sure that we recognize all that the Seroptimus are doing. I'm a father with three daughters. Uh, what they're doing for women in business, what they're doing for women in school, what they're doing for young ladies to promote them, to encourage them, to uh, support them is absolutely phenomenal. I've been to several events where they've handed out scholarships. They've given them to uh, high school students. They've given them to single mothers. They've given them to family, uh, mothers with, with large families. 
uh, to further their education. And I look at what these ladies do and they do it quietly and they do it from behind the scenes and they rarely boast about themselves. So it's time to brag about the Sorotmas a little bit and realize that this doesn't happen without them. And I look at that those ladies and I think, you know, there's always somebody stepping up to take the lead on the next parade. And, uh, and so I would encourage anybody out there thinking about, gosh, I'm a woman in business. How could I get involved? Check into your Sorotmas International of Gresham, find out how you might be able to learn about them, participate, and who knows, they might be willing to pass the torch to you for the next parade. No one will really remember you, but what they will remember is the spirit you left. And I guess that's what, um, that little bit of spirit. And, and remember, I wasn't the, I wasn't the only person. It was all those other wonderful ladies, and I wish I could list all their names right now, all those wonderful ladies that gave their energy and their time, and they volunteered, and they and they loved this, and that was that whole week of that whole week of children's events. So I do, I want to give them credit. I want the parade to continue. I want the parade to be um, to Gresham like other Rose Festival is to Portland. And, and not, like I said, I, I want it to continue to be what I call a down-home parade, someplace where people can go and enjoy, always have a bear. Uh, so I, uh, my hope is that it continues. And I think, I think it will. I think, I think um, it, it, that will, it will happen. Uh, so I think that'll continue. This is a fun thing for this community to come out on a Saturday and enjoy and participate with their family. But really, when it comes right down to it, this, this parade will motivate you uh, to be a part of this community, to understand this community, and to just kind of respect one another and understand that, uh, you know, we're all one together. And, and Gresham is really a special place with a special event, and that's the Teddy Bear Parade. It's a community parade designed for families especially the children. Anybody could come. It's always a great time. Uh, it, it Just the spirit. Of, and then, oh, I would say, bring your bear. I would say that. There's a little bear waving in that yes. one. Yes, <laughs> that's darling. Good bears of the world. This is an interesting group. Looks like people of all walks of life are involved. Promoting good bears of the world. Oh, look at that. Oh, and look at this one, yes. That's cute. Some independent entries. Great escape hair design. Oh, there yes. you go with the big bear the designer. See that. Oh, look at this big one. Boy, that is cinnamon bear. Cinnamon bear. I remember listening to the cinnamon bear. My children listen to the cinnamon bear. Highland Dell Lifetime. Oh, there's the bear inside. That's cute. Waving at everybody. That is darling. It's a high quality child care program. It's accredited through the National Association for the Education of Young Children. I've seen that bus around Gresham quite a bit. Now we have Gresham United Methodist Preschool. This is their second year in the parade, Steve. My goodness, look at all the kids on that trailer. And they offer a quality program for kids three and four years old. Let's see if we can get them to all wait at the same, at the time. same time. Hi, everybody. Hi. Oh, they're too, far too serious. They're far too serious. Look at that. I think they're amazed. There, there you go. they go. <laughs> well, their motto, Steve, is learning, laughing, and loving. Those are, those are good axioms to live by. That's absolutely right. I try to do that at least once a day. That's true. That's true. Well, you laugh a lot. I do. And the next one we have coming is Interlochen Lane Group. Boy, that's, that's 
That's a nice uh, car, too. An old Chevy. Is that Chevy we have a Tammy McLaughlin, and uh, she is uh, Miss Sweetheart. Uh, she's been in a number of pageants, and she's riding uh, in this car today to advertise their Sweetheart pageant program. And there she is. That's a little Miss Sweetheart. Her name is Miranda McLaughlin. Okay. I'm sure that's probably Tammy's daughter. Oh, and daughter. she has somebody with her, too, Miss Preteen, yes. Crystal. Crystal Bowden. There we are. Miss Sweetheart, little Miss Miranda, and preteen Miss Crystal. And a beautiful little Mustang convertible. Yes, it is. <laughs> That's cute. They, uh, they're part of the uh, sponsors of Make-A-Wish Foundation. They donate hundreds of dollars each year through different penny drives and whatnot. That's great. This is the Moms Club of Gresham. They've been in our parade for eight or nine years that I recall. Uh, the moms and the kids change as the, mo as the kids grow up but they are a support group for one another and they are anxious to have other people join with them. They call themselves the Moms Club of West Gresham. And it looks like some of the children go to uh, Kids View Daycare as well. Yeah, I'm seeing Kids View Preschool, not finding the chart for that, but the Moms Club, that's gotta be them. Coming this way now uh, at a rather slow pace, but that's okay. They have a right to be that's celebrating it. their uh, 20th anniversary in the community as Toy Bear Limited. And that's Pat Fiedler. And Pat Fiedler was also, she not only started the Teddy Bear Parade, she's a Citizen of the Year for Gresham this year. So we're really proud of her. And if we're, there's any community events going on throughout the year, Pat's the one that's always there and involved. Oh, you bet. And they opened in September 82 their uh, specialty store. They offer unique toys for kids of all ages. Winnie the Pooh is visiting at noon today. Oh, well, that's wonderful. Winnie the Pooh's in town. You better tell my little girl about yeah, see, that. See, there you go. Now you can take her over there and to see. You know, they're always doing something special for children. And now that you've got a little girl, which she's about a year and a half old now. Oh, almost two. She'll be two almost on the 26th two. of October. You're going to spend many, many years in that store for, with well, her. Well, I'll tell you, the neat thing about Toy Bear, too, is a lot of folks will travel to the mall. They'll go to other toy stores, you know. And, and i got to tell you, go there first. That's you're not right. only going to find great toys, but you're going to find some some different and kinds of toys, a lot toys of learning too. educational That's toys exactly out there for right. kids of all ages. And where else, I mean, Winnie the Pooh's not riding with anybody else except the toy bear today. That's exactly good. right. Oh, that looks wonderful. And she, her husband is driving the car today. And, uh, yeah, I'm just wondering if they want to sell that little convertible. My goodness, Isn't that, that is pretty? adorable. A little that 65 nice. Mustang convertible. Go horsey. Oh, that's great. And of course, all the wonderful folks in MCTV out here helping oh, us out absolutely. today. Uh, Going to bring this to our viewers at home. That's right. Well, we're off to a great start. We're going well, to start with the city council, apparently, but uh, right up there in front is that wonderful 56 Oldsmobile. That's beautiful. I love that car. With the teddy bear, of course, you will notice today that the teddy bear will be carried and driven and every which way the teddy bear will be presented today. And as always, the teddy bears are of every different size, shape, color. And as well they should be. And I've got to apologize to the viewers. My teddy bear is in my locker at Station 74. <laughs> Uh, it's a cute little firefighter bear my, my niece got me a couple years ago, but oh. here they come. Well, my and, teddy bear uh, is being, is being uh, held today by one of our city councilors. Oh, well, it's in good hands then. It's in good hands. He didn't have a teddy bear, so I loaned him mine. That's great. This is Tony Silva driving that car. Now, that car, again, was a, originally called the Ticket to Ride. Wally Silva, bless his heart, he's, he's passed away, but Wally was a big part of that. And a lot of kids from the area built that car with the community. Uh, just some great folks that put that thing together. Uh, the Clock family put a lot of time into that too, it's Jim beautiful. Clock and a lot of other folks. So that's where the plate Kid Built came from, is that was built oh, by kids in the area that's as, great. A, as an alternative to some of the other things that kids were getting involved to at the time. It's absolutely There's beautiful. There's Tony right there, and playing proud to be an American, and why not? Proud to be an officer too, he's a great guy. He's a good guy. You see All right. Here comes well, the mayor. Well, here comes Mayor Chuck Becker. Now he's looking pretty good in that Corvette, Boy. that just suits him just well. That looks great. Now, is that what he drives to the office every day? I don't think so. You don't think so? You don't want to park a car like that in City Hall. <laughs> <laughs> Looking good, Mayor. Looking good, absolutely. <laughs> Mr. Mayor and Shane Bemis. Now, now see, now Shane used to have a Corvette, but now he's got right. you know, Derek and I believe another one on another the way. Another one so on the way. That's so exciting that for him kind, and Julie. That kind Shane of Shane Bemis, the way, owner yep. of Bellagio's Pizza, city councilor. Great job, Shane. Good, president of our council. President of the council and doing a great job. Yeah. The and Corvettes. Here comes Dave Shields. Uh, Corvettes come to us from uh, now. Dave Shields, or Councilor Dave Shields. There he Look goes at him. with his teddy bear. Hiding away in there a little yeah. bit. 
Yep, that must be a, a grandson in, riding in, in, in there with him. And Jacquinette? Jacquinette McIntyre. Boy, that's that's snazzy, isn't it? City Corvette. This is a Rose City Corvette Club, by the way, folks. These cars come from Rose City Corvette. They're, they're escorting the mayor and the chamber presidents. They were established in 1973. There's 250 members. My goodness. Now, there's a Connie Auto riding in that yep. red Corvette. Now, I think that she looks very good in that. She needs to have one of those. You know, Prince wrote a song about it. We can't cue it up. But there's a song about Little Red Corvette, and she suits it well. It looks Pack great. 664 coming right at you. Look at the excitement on the faces of these kids. That kid <laughs> in the middle is having too much fun. Almost. Come on, buddy. <laughs> don't break a smile. There he goes. <laughs> By golly, 664. Oh. They've got families from East Gresham and Kelly Creek Schools. They conduct a service project every month, such as planting trees, cleaning up schools, or collecting food and clothing for shelters. Love the outdoors. They go camping and and hiking. It's Cub Scout's 75th anniversary this year. Wow. How about the Scouts? I like the old truck. How about that? Yeah. Put their tent up in the back. That's great. They're going to entertain us. I, you know, at first I thought it was the Macarena, but now I realize it's something <laughs> they're doing on their own. Good this, for them. So now we have the Greater Gresham Girl Scouts. They've been in our parade for 15 years. And the Girl Scouts help girls grow strong and healthy by fostering a pos positive self-image, helping others, and making uh, wise choices. Individual troops help out at the community in numerous different events, and they certainly do. Oh, aren't they sweet? Oh, what a cutie. Pretty in pink. Yes, Good morning. They're sweet. And Hello Kitty on the hat. Good for them. Well, this thing making all that racket is a fire truck. It's an antique 1928. This is Barney Furstenberg. Uh, you know, it's a 1928 Aaron's Fox fire truck. Now, we saw this at the 100th year celebration parade. I'm yes. so happy. I'm so happy that it made it out today. It's pretty. Uh, this was restored. At, uh, they've owned it since 1964. It was restored by Barney and Todd Furstenberg. They use it for displays. And it's the first time in this parade. The riders on the on the uh, truck are Sarah and Rachel Greco. Good for that them to come on wonderful. out. We appreciate it. Looking good. We like right, it. That looks good, doesn't it? Well, That's we get to see this tractor each and every year. This gentleman brings that. Uh, it's a restored John Deere 1946 uh, tractor, custom-made wagon. The Ganger family and friends riding in the wagon. Gangers come each and every year. It's great to see you once again. Love that little tractor. Love the wagon. and yes. Great seeing the family. I'd love to take a hayride in that one. But isn't that special about this parade? You allow a family to come in and oh, be a yes. participant and an entrant, and each and every year they come down, they look forward to it. It's a tradition. So. Well, you know what we do is we ask them to, to pre-register, but there's always, they hear about the last minute, and they come to the uh, registration desk, and we let everybody in. Well, Folks, I think you probably remember last, uh, last uh, beginning of the summer, Commissioner Leonard had, uh, in the spirit of fun, I think he had some comments about uh, Greshamites coming to his, his parade in Portland. So the commissioner, I sent him an invitation to come with us today and be here for the teddy bear parade. We told him we'd duct tape a spot for him, but I didn't know they were going to duct tape you, commissioner. So thanks for being a good sport. Anyway, we're glad to have you here today, commissioner, and I've got a proclamation for you. This says, uh, whereas Portland City Commissioner Randy Leonard has retracted comments that were published in the media suggesting that suburban residents from places such as Gresham were prone to uncouth behavior during last June's Rose Festival parade. <laughs> it gets better. Hold on. <laughs> Whereas Commissioner Leonard has kept things in the spirit of fun and shown himself to be a good sport despite the possibility that he was, well, a little grumpy for a short period of time last summer. Whereas Commissioner Leonard did not carry through on his threat to annex Gresham into the city of Portland by duct taping a perimeter around the entire city. Whereas Gresham residents are some of the kindest and most forgiving people a temporarily disgruntled Portland city commissioner could encounter. Whereas Commissioner Leonard has proven to be a class act by accepting our invitation to join the teddy bear parade and actually showing up to participate, despite what I knew you knew what was coming. Whereas the city of Gresham appreciates Commissioner Leonard's candor and good humor, despite his previous regretful comments. And whereas Commissioner Leonard's mea culpa merits full mayoral recognition. Now, therefore, I, Shane Bemis, mayor of Gresham, to hereby proclaim Saturday, September 29th, 2007, as Commissioner Randy Leonard Day in Gresham. <laughs> and Commissioner, we thank you for having the class to recant your comments and show solidarity by, by joining us today. Would you like to say anything? <laughs> well, uh, I think I've said enough, actually. <laughs> I'm tired of giving speech. I will tell you this. I'm not a religious man, 
But you need to know I got on my knees last night and I said, God, this isn't a big one. Please let it rain tomorrow. <laughs> uh, I, there, there you go. You, God is on your side. Thanks very much, Mayor. Right. Thank you, Christian. Here, we give you that. All right. Enjoy the rest Thank of the Thank you. Way. All right. Okay. Well, that was fun. Oh, we've got some fun, fun, fun square dancing. You know, I do a lot of square uh, dancing at the Rockwood Grange. I don't know. Is that do you? This is the group, the oh, Rockwood Grange. Oh, no yes. kidding. Well, it's a community-based organization helping those in need through cash donations, food drives, and other charitable functions. Um, the Rockwood Grange sponsors the Checkerboard Squares, a dance group in the Gresham area. And did you know square dancing is Oregon State dance? I, I did not know that, but that, that's only fitting. Sir Optimus. Pick up the red group, Citizen Corps. Now, talk about getting involved in your community. Here's an opportunity. Oh, the Calliope. We love this. From the Oregon Zoo. They celebrated 50 years at its current site. Much has changed in 50 years, including the opening of Predators of the Serengeti earlier this month. Thank you, Oregon and Zoo. And they're bringing lions and cheetahs back to the zoo. Well, and, and then here's one of my faves. Carol Nielsen Hood. Absolutely, a favorite of all of ours. So Carol is now retired from the Gresham Chamber of Commerce for so many years? years of dedicated service, uh, forever. But she's—you wouldn't tell by looking at her. She looks so young and and just—I'll uh, tell you, Carol. Thanks for all you do for the city. We appreciate you being a counselor. But she is just such a fabulous lady and a member of the Sir Optimus. Indeed. Good for Carol Nielsen Hood, and she deserves a happy retirement. She does a lot. Oh, here comes June Jacobs, I believe. June They're Jacobs, president-elect of Seroptimus International of Gresham, driving in a 1933 Plymouth convertible owned and driven by Patrick and Patty Brost since 1974. So by the way, hey, kids with their kids. who's this? Hey, I recognize that guy. I recognize that guy, too. That's Greg Matthews. What? Yes. Greg Matthews, Greg Matthews. Look at that. Greg Matthews uh, for state representative. Well, we are running for re-election. That's just part of the deal. All oh, up. look at that. That you old Packer, group. that is from my dad, Dale Matthews. Has some firefighters out here today walking with the group. We appreciate that. Some family. Uh, and, and at, yeah, Dale and Karen Matthews in the Packard. And, and there I am in the bear suit waving to everybody. And now here we're comes start the blue group, and this is a group. And I should explain that in Sir Optimus, we have different groups, and this is a blue group, and every one of them has a number. So. <laughs> and wow. these are the Whoa. PDX Danes, the, the Great Dane community of Portland. Look at the size of these dogs. Wow. And My they goodness. are adorable. Uh oh. And there's a little Dane in training right there. Oh. And there's <laughs> supposed to be 16 dogs in the, in this group. Oh, oh look at that. Amazing. I hope that little baby makes look it. Look at these beautiful dogs. <laughs> They are, aren't they? Wow. They've been in the parade for three years now. Well, and, and folks at home, you're enjoying watching this as a result of this next group, the Metro East Community oh, Media. Oh, I were Metro East. Without Metro East, we wouldn't be able to be we, doing they, this. They help so many people make television programs. They yep. really are the answer. And they've been you, filming us for 27 years. They're, they're awesome. They're so involved in the community. They do such an outstanding job. And we appreciate oh. it very much. We're on camera, Carol. Oh, there we are. Yeah, That's that. perfect. Perfect. <laughs> but, you know, they do the hotline. They do everything in this community to, to promote oh. Gresham. And so we're very grateful for them. Outstanding. And they've got that bear mounted. That reminds me of Chevy Chase in the, uh, in the episode where his mother-in-law <laughs> was strapped to the top and they lost her along the way. <laughs> Don't try that That's at home, That's cute. Folks. That is so cute. But that I tell you, they are a wonderful asset to our community. They certainly are. And again, uh, Metro East Community Media, thank you very much for all you're doing out there. Absolutely. Making, it, making it happen. We're going to pump the brakes for Gresham High School Rhythm S Dance Team. Wow. Here they are. Look at these lovely ladies. Hey. 144 in this segment of, yes. of Gresham. So that's great. And of course, uh, you see the Rhythm S, and, and they're, they're a big deal. Always out there. We appreciate that. Yeah. Looking good, Megan. And, uh, and of course, you hear the band. And that is the Gresham Fight Song that you're hearing. And as you know, 30 years ago we started this parade, and I also graduated from Gresham High School. So I'm a product of Gresham High School Gophers. It's in my blood, it's in my heart. Let's listen to them. Craig, last night they I think Gabe Hoffman's in there somewhere playing the saxophone. Oh, is he? Oh. A little shout out to Gabe, yeah. Last night they did their Cheerleaders. Yeah. Wow. Cheerleaders are always pretty. <laughs> They're 
Absolutely. Looking good, ladies. All I can say is we have just thrown it down to Barlow, and I don't know what Barlow's bringing, but Gresham brought it all today. <laughs> good for the Gophers, and that's not a Gopher, that's actually a Dachshund. Yeah. But he'll do. He's wearing the colors. Yeah. Sam Barlow Bruins. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Barlow High School is coming our way. Programs. They want to thank the community for the continued support. Good for them. Award-winning band right out of out of Sam Barlow in the Gresham Barlow School District. A Barlow dance team. A Barlow cheerleaders. Ladies, you look lovely. Thanks for coming on out. Greg, I think they met your challenge. Well, and my kids are slated to go to Sam Barlow, and they'll become Bruins too. So I've got to be part of that too. Yeah, so absolutely. Good for them. It's great good to see them. them. Absolutely. We are blowing bubbles in the air out here yeah, today. Yeah, this is great. Good for Barlow. Way to step it up. Awesome. Well, I think uh, Gresham High is wondering what to do next now. <laughs> well, Longwood Learning Center, this group is near and dear to my heart, if you don't mind. They are a locally owned learning center, education fun become one. Look at these kids and look at that Jeep. I'm waiting for the music, but I'm not hearing it, but that's okay. Uh, they've been doing this for, oh, 13 plus years, maybe 14 years. They love being part of the community, touching the lives of Gresham and the future of all these kids. So great to see you. Here come the Pirates. Arr. Arr. Wow. Ragtag Rogue Raiders and the Pirates of Portlandia. And they are reenactors, enthusiasts. We can be found at festivals, fairs, community gatherings, and numerous charity events. Whoa, thanks for being out here in Gresham. Yo ho, what's their favorite letter? What do you think? What? Might be R. What kind yeah, of soccer? Girls ASA, this is the Amateur Softball Association. They provide opportunities for young girls aged 5 to 14 to play and learn to love softball. Premier League in East County. You bet they are. What a great group. Nothing. Excellent softball players. Look at these athletes. Very nice. Gresham's ASA. There you go, ladies. Looking good. And gentlemen, thanks for coming out and supporting as well. Go get them, girls. Coming down the street is the <laughs> Once Upon a Time Princess Parties. Providing princess performers for parties and events. They love meeting new people and growing new places. Boy, I tell you, I, Greg's, Greg's got a, a daughters. I have one. This, this, this could be the thing. This could be the thing. Well, here we have some gymnastics coming our way. Rygert Elite Gymnastics provides quality, safe instruction in gymnastics for ages 12 months to 18 years of age. All levels of experience welcome. They also have an amazing ballet program. And there we are, the cartwheels. Cartwheels and Boy. Wow, they've got matching outfits and everything. They're all dialed in. Very cool. And again, all part of that, again, that discipline and fitness, camaraderie. Boy, that's pretty impressive. I always wonder, we're early in the parade, so I always wonder how long they can continue to cartwheel. Right. I, perhaps someone could report back to us when the parade's over how, how long, how many cartwheels, or even to count them. Boy, wow. look at this coming. There'd be a lot of them. Oh. Whoa. Wow. Wow. Whoa. Did I just see what I think I saw? I think I saw like a double flipper. flipper. Now we're walking on our hands. Now we're just showing off, folks. Let's, just, <laughs> let's give this kid a round of applause. Let's give it for him. Yeah, let's look good. Yeah, Gene Burton, I'd like to see you do that. Wow. Look at that. And look at her go, too. That's amazing. That is great. Wow. Turn that camera upside down. I might be able to do it. <laughs> Diamond Unity. This is a drill team group formed by Mrs. Shepard to keep young girls and boys off the streets and out of gang activities. There you go. Mrs. Shepard, great work, Mrs. Shepard. Well, Gresham Barlow School District Superintendent Jim Schlachter and his wife, Jan. Boy, uh, the district's banner is held up by two students. They've got the Gresham, the Gordon Russell drum line going. And here's and the here superintendent. He is there, there he is, Jim Schlachter, looking good. Wow, look at that car. Look good. And, and boy, we yeah. have every, Look at all these kids. East all Gresham. 18 of our schools East are Orient in the house. today. Yeah, East Orient there. All of these great schools. North Come forward. Gresham's Thanks coming so much. up next. Boy, joining their superintendent. That's a great sight to be seen. Look at all these students coming out with their parents. Holy mackerel. North Gresham Elementary Schools on right. display. Good morning, folks. The Hollydale Honey Bears are here. Oh. Wow. And Hogan Cedars Elementary, are they the trees? Are 
say the Hogan Cedars? Hogan Cedars, Cedars Hawks are we. Be safe, be responsible, be respectful. How about those Hawks at Hogan Cedars? Good morning. And then we have West Gresham. Deep, Deep Creek. Creek. Clear Creek. Dexter McCarty, Gordon Russell, West Orient. You're making Spring, it happen. Springwater Trail, San Barlow High, High School, Gresham High School. The super fans are in the house. And Oregon's Teacher of the Year, Mr. Michael Lindblad. There he is. And his family. Michael. This is their third year in the teddy bear parade, and the Gresham Saturday Market strives to provide Gresham and East County residents the best produce, flowers, crafts, and more. There's weekly live entertainment from 11 to 3. This family market has voted the best farmer's market in 2015 in Gresham. And you know, I've also gone there, and it's wonderful up there because there's no problem with parking. And here we have the Danish Dreamers, differently abled, nationally accepted. They advocate for the differently abled community. They're an energetic group of children and young adults who, through cheer, flag and dance, Smile. performance, bring inclusion to the community at large. That's awesome. Dare to realize that everyone can achieve a meaningful and enriching life while reaching for the stars. Kids, don't try this wow. home. Well, don't try oh it at my, my home. You could break something. Oh Two locations for martial arts training in Gresham by U.S. World Class Taekwondo. Oh, what? Oh, we're going to have a demonstration right here in front oh, of us. Oh, going to fly and break a board. Whoa! Yeah! Wow! wow. That was awesome. That was incredible. Nice job. That's good. I tell you, the Nutcracker is out of this world. And and she is performing just beautifully. And in Look at her. Chuck Taylor Converse shoes, I might add. But uh, <laughs> I'm so glad she showed up because I was plan B. Oh, but, were uh, you really? She's just doing oh, phenomenal my. work. Inspired Dance Center. It's beautiful. Evening with the Nutcracker. December 16th and 17th. Keep up the great work, young lady. You are awesome. I'd like to see you do all those movements, I, Greg. No, you wouldn't, Carol. <laughs> it, it would not be that pretty, I can tell oh, you that. Oh, how pretty. Look at these little girls. This how is amazing. Darling. How This is amazing. Darling. Hi there. Hi. Can you smile? Wave for TV. Beautiful. Oh, look at their darling. That will be inspiring. It's the Nutcracker, folks, and you oh, can go see the performance. Oh, here we go again. I'm going to guess this young man's not going to carry her for the entire parade route, but I'll bet he could. Oh, how beautiful. And again, folks, that's December 16th at 7 p.m. and December 17th mm -hmm. at 2 and 7, Mount Hood Community College Theater. They're volunteers, and they're from Multnomah County Animal Service in Troutdale. The shelter service uh, services lost are homeless animals throughout Multnomah County, including Portland. Look what they have here. This is pitties in pink. Oh, these are isn't pit that bulls sweet? that get a real bad rap. Look at that. And look oh, at them. Look they're, at they're, that. they're very cute. Look at these little oh, doggies look, in they're pink. They're waving at us. How adorable is that? I love that. Very cute. Uh, they've got the unicycler wow. juggling and yes. a, a dog with a hat and a man with cool glasses. So and they're that, all dialed in there. Looking <laughs> very good. Umpqua bank or bust. <laughs> Umpqua bank or bust. So, look at them go. Let's look at the little part. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle on your screen, folks. Wearing a helmet. Oh, there. Very good. And he's got his little bear tied up. And there goes Ginger Abs. She's walking with so the Umpqua safe. bank. That's great. Oh, and here we have Lee Kinnear DeVore. She's one of our lifetime members of Sir Optimus. She was one of the original ones that started Sir Optimus 40 years ago in Gresham. And she's driven uh, by Pam. And she's also, Pam is from Powell Valley, and she's also one of our chamber mem members. Well, here's the East Side. Oh, they yeah. did a dance for us last Didn't night. Didn't they do a great job? So Harvest brought the kids out last night, and her yes. daughter choreographed this great little thing, the teddy bear dance. They did a wonderful job. They did a Salt great Academy, job. Salt Academy, nonprofit performing arts academy. They're known for a wide variety of dance classes, extensive music, and original musicals. They're offering over 50 classes to children as young as two, point, two and a half years. They also have adult classes, too. So they're located on Main Street. And they are equestrian trails from Oregon. Oregon Equestrian Trails, nonprofit formed in 1970. Built and maintain horse camps and trails in Oregon. They promote education of equestrians and the use of leave no trace outdoor ethics. Campground etiquette and trial etiquette. etiquette. The organization links riders together by relating news that impacts all Oregon Equestrian Trail users. Wow. Save our wild burrows. Wildboroughproject.org. How cool wow, is that? That's I love cool. the horses. I love yeah, the little Yeah, that views. is cool. And uh, leave no trace behind, I guess, is <laughs> why we have wagons with this group. Yes, yes. Well, uh, everybody likes to see horses and animals in a parade. And yes, so they this do. Is, good morning. She matches her boots, match the she, horse. The That's whole thing, yeah. Very nice. 
<laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, oh, a little late. Oh, he's gonna catch up. That oh, little fellow's how excited. sweet. That is he's really sweet. He's got painted sweet. toenails. Yep, pink tennis shoes. Yeah, is that what it was? The yeah, tennis little, shoes? Little oh, front oh, how little tennis shoes. How sweet. Oh, There's wow. Cha Cha the Clown. Speaking of different, let's get one of our counselors on this little ride here. <laughs> uh, Cha Cha the Clown. Community helper bringing joy to events like school carnivals, preschool shows, and birthday parties. She wants she us to remember that play and laughter is an important part of life that keeps us all healthy. Kiwanis! Wow. Columbia's Kiwanis of the Columbia Gorge, Troutdale and Corbett. They are a global organization of volunteers dedicated to changing the work one child and one community at, to at a time. High school youth learn leadership skills in the Key Club at Corbett and Reynolds High School. Scholarships are also given out. The Kiwanis Club is active in raising funds for children's cancer treatment and research. Wow. Backpack Buddies, Troutdale, Summer Fest, and more. John Owens, Sam Owens, and Micah Orlove are walking with them. And they had 15 to 25 people. Speaking of big oh, deals, an honored guest of ours, West Gresham Elementary. They're celebrating its 96th and final year in, in Gresham. Gresham. It kind of brings a tear to your eye. That's an amazing school, but then again, it does need to be replaced. At the close of our 2019-20 school year, they will unleash the Wildcats to other schools in the district. Staff, parents, volunteers, and alumni of West thank Gresham for their support for the better part of the last century. Please check Facebook page for upcoming events, including a farewell open house towards the end of the school year. And uh, thanks, Amy Fogler, for putting that together. It's such an iconic building and a school. It's, we're going to miss that. West Gresham Wildcats. It's an amazing school, oh. and it has a great feel to it. It's such a tight community. It is. It's absolutely wonderful. When I taught Dare, it was one of my favorites. So close community, such a close-knit group. But also, the school is just, Beautiful. it's in a condition that we need to just Yes. We can't forward. expect our and students to go to school. It's just not safe yeah. any longer. Yeah, yeah. So. absolutely right. Yeah, that's right. So wonderful. they're our honored guests this year, and we're really pleased to have them. I wish that's them well in the future, wherever they may end up. Isn't that amazing? 96 years. Good I, for them. Amen. Well, they are, they are the top-ranked Medicare 5 facility. They provide 24-hour nursing plus physical, occupational, and speech therapy. Their mission is to promote the highest quality of life for the residents, staff, and community. Leslie Workman and Zoe Clay are their leaders today, and they probably have 15 to 20 people with them today. This is great. And this is nice, and I'm glad it's not raining. I'm glad it's fairly nice for them. Oh, yeah, that's outstanding. Hi. I love the blue. I love the balloons. You really yep. stepped up. Yep. Look at that. And they got teddy bears. This is cool. And, you know, let me put it to you this way. They did all this knowing it might rain this morning. I know and it. look at the effort they made. I know Good for it. Them. Thank Wonderful. you, Gresham Post Acute Care and Rehab. Yep, Outstanding. Yep. Great to see this you out here. This is great. They're going to go really home is. and get warm. <laughs> that really is just wonderful. That is. Good for Super. Them. Thank you, guys. Carol, I got to say thank you. You know, you could do this without me, but I no, got to tell I couldn't. you, I wouldn't want to do this without you. You are just absolutely well, amazing you. to be with, and it's just a lot of it's fun. It's fun. We have fun, and, and we're here to help with our parade, and um, hopefully whoever does this in the future, if we're not here, that they do as we're good as be you here. and I do. We're, let's not even talk about replacements yet. See, that makes my agent really nervous. <laughs> Uh, folks, 37 years and counting throughout yes. the International Gresham Teddy Bear Parade right here, smack dab in the middle of Main Street, Gresham, Oregon, USA. Look for us the last Saturday of every September of every year. Yep. We'll be right back here with Metro East Community Media again. And again, 1,800 participants. We got through it. No rain. Beautiful no day. Rain. Thank Come you, on Lord. down and enjoy what we have to offer to you downtown Gresham. It's an amazing place to be. Come join our vendors, join our community, and look forward to seeing you the next big thing. Amen. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. Thank you all. We'll see you. Have a great day.